Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at that upcoming major snowstorm that's going to be included with a large nor'easter that's going to move offshore of the east coast. <music> Now, first things first, I wanted to show you guys something. You might have noticed there's a Direct Weather 2 channel that you've seen me post or you've seen it on my channel or you've just seen it in general and you guys are probably thinking, what in the world is this? And I can't tell you yet, unfortunately, but all I can say is go subscribe because there is a lot of exciting things going to be happening over there. You're going to want to be subscribed, uh, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're trying to hit that channel to 100 subscribers before it even has a video, so go ahead and do that. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, what do you think this Direct Weather 2 channel is going to be about? What do you think it's going to be? Let me know your predictions in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get right into the radar, actually, the current radar. And we're taking a look at the Pacific North west first things first and you can see that there is some snowfall up there for the cascade mountains also the northern rockies also some rain showers moving on along that northwest coast of the united states and then some of the plains of montana there as well seeing some moderate rainfall going on up there in the northwest corner of the united states now let's just zoom down into the new england states that's going to be way far east and as you can see, we have tons and tons of that lake effect snowfall that we mentioned yesterday going on for New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and then some rain showers around. This should be done by the time we're reaching tonight, uh, and there should be mostly just some accumulation there for the mountainous regions. Most of the lower elevation regions have been too warm, and I don't expect too much accumulation. Matter of fact, I don't even really expect too much accumulation anywhere from this, just because of how warm things have been. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look here at some of that severe weather that's expected, which there's hardly any actually. Day one, we have no thunderstorms uh, forecasted here from the Storm Prediction Center, so we're going to just fly right past that. It's good to get a break here after all of the activity we've had the past few weeks, and really just the whole month of March so far has been a really, really big severe weather month. Hopefully that April and May are a little bit quieter here. Now, as we move towards Tuesday, March 30th, as you can see, we are going to have two general thunderstorm risks here, and that one of those is going to be more for the central United States and some of the Gulf states there, and then the other one is going to be there for Florida and Georgia. Within that one for the Plains, we do have a marginal risk in there for now for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and a bit of Tennessee as well. That will be where we expect to see some isolated severe weather possible. There is the possibility that we do see a slight risk upgraded for day two, which is going to be Tuesday. We will be watching that very, very closely. Now, as we move towards day three here, Wednesday, March 31st, you can see that we will have a large marginal risk that extends all the way from the Gulf states all the way up through Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, North Carolina, and then even up in through portions of Virginia. Obviously, there's a pretty good chance we will see an upgrade to a slight risk somewhere in there with how large that marginal risk is. This will be included with a cold front right before that very uh, large Arctic blast that's going to come through for the 1st and the 2nd of April. We're going to talk a little bit about that later on within this video. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at that simulated radar. We're going to take a look at the temperature anomalies as well. And we're just going to break down the next few days and what we're expecting, and we're going to get into that major snowstorm that's possible for the eastern United States in just a moment. Now, first things first, here we are taking a look at that simulated radar, and as you can see, things are going to get pretty quiet as we move towards uh, the PM hours tonight, actually. We're going to see a lot of that snow uh, move away from the first off the northeast, but second off there in the Pacific Northwest. We're going to see a big warm up for the east, big cool down for the west here for a little bit. As you can see on the temperature anomalies, we're expecting some pretty far below average temperatures out there west and some pretty warm temperatures, especially in the central United States and near normal there for the east coast. As we move towards about approximately 6 or 7 a.m. here on Wednesday, March 31st, you can see that that cool down will have mostly moved up into the central United States. We do see that cold front coming through. Uh, into the, I would say, interior eastern United States there with a lot of storminess that is going to be associated with that marginal risk there on day three. Let's just take a look at the temperature anomalies for this date. And as you can see, things are going to get very warm for the eastern United States right before this cool down comes through. But you can tell that cool down is on its way. It's, it's very quickly approaching the region. As you can see, we get that storminess developing there for the eastern United States even further by the time we're reaching the PM hours there of March 31st, Wednesday. Uh, and you can see that cool down has moved even further east, now centered basically up over the upper Midwest there and the Great Lakes. Let's take a look at those temperature anomalies again. As you can see, by this point also, the warm temperatures are around for the eastern United States still. 
Uh, they're a little less uh, widespread by this point. Basically, the immediate East Coast is dealing with this very potent warm-up, but that potent cooldown is right behind it, and that's going to quickly move into the area soon. This is by 11 p.m. there on Wednesday, and as you can see, we have tons of that snowfall beginning there for Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York. The storminess is around. You can see that cold front coming through, also that potent Arctic blast moving through. This is by about 2 a.m. there on Thursday, April 1st, and as you can see, that snowstorm develops even further. Now, Kentucky, West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, even the Smoky Mountains down there for North Carolina and Tennessee getting some of that snowfall. So this is becoming a little bit more widespread as we're moving through this uh, and progressing through this, you can see that nor'easter developing there near the Delmarva, near Philadelphia. We have a 998 millibar low pressure center by this point. I would say about maybe 5, 5 a.m., something like that. Uh, we do have that heavy snowfall developing even further for the same states, New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio, especially there, where that snowfall will eventually begin to accumulate. Now we see a 994 millibar low pressure center centered over southern New England. Very strong uh, area of low pressure with some snowfall there to the west for Pennsylvania and New York mostly by this point and you could definitely tell that potent Arctic blast is moving its way through by this point as well uh, and then by the time we're reaching about 3 or 4 p.m. there on Thursday April 1st this is not a joke like I've been saying for days uh, we see that snowfall still around for New York and maybe even New England by this point especially we have a 987 millibar low pressure center now so it's only intensifying that Arctic blast has reached a lot of the southeast by this point as well and then by the time we're reaching about 2 a.m. there on Friday, this is going to be April 2nd. You can see most of that snowfall has moved out, but definitely by about 6 a.m. that will have fully moved out. And the Arctic blast is going to be centered over the eastern United States. All right. Now, in a moment, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the temperature anomalies for this time frame. We're going to also take a look at the actual temperatures. We're going to take a little bit of a look at when that warm-up can occur, when we're going to see this cool-down finally end, and then we're going to take a look at that total snowfall for this snowstorm as of right now, according to the models. All right, now here we are taking a look at that temperature anomaly map, and as you can see, we have the far below normal temperatures. This model has not backed out, out of that very, very potent cooldown that it's calling for. Arctic blast has come straight from the Arctic regions of Canada and just shoves its way down into the southeastern United States with widespread 20 plus degrees below normal here. As you can see for many states like Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. It's especially those southern regions that I'm worried about because I think that some of those areas might have already planted some plants, obviously, as it's not expected to get very cold this time of year, especially down there. But as we take a look at those actual low temperatures, this could be problematic. Widespread 20s, especially in those red shades. So, that I mean, for states even like Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Mississippi, we're having a hard freeze in some of those more southern areas, a very hard freeze there for Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia, Virginia, where we're seeing some of those lower 20s, upper teens showing up. Pennsylvania, New York, also very cold in the teens, some of those more mountainous regions especially. Same story with New England. Those areas obviously haven't planted any plants. They know better than that. But uh, it's mostly, again, the more southern regions that I'm especially worried about here. Now, as far as when a warm-up could occur here, we're taking a look at about to 2 p.m. here on Sunday, April 4th, you can see by this point we're going to have 10 to 15 degrees above normal according to this model. So we could see a warm-up occur uh, pretty shortly after this potent Arctic blast. So the good news here is that it's not going to be a long-term pattern with those very cold temperatures in the east. It should be a couple of days, and then it should move out. And really that 2nd of April is really going to be the most potent one. Outside of that, it's only going to be slightly below normal. So it shouldn't be too bad outside of that one day we're just going to have to get through there. Now, as far as that total snowfall for this snowstorm that we're expecting, it's actually surprisingly uh, snowy here, according to this model. This is the European model. We see that in the grays, we're expecting anything from a dusting, if anything. Within those lighter blues, that's where we expect two to six inches of snow, so that's pretty widespread. Now, take these upper amounts with a grain of salt, because this is kind of rare for this time of year, uh, and this is a little bit more in the medium range, but we're expecting six to ten there in the purples, potentially. And then the pinks is where we're expecting ten inches plus which I'm kind of skeptical if that will be for West Virginia or Pennsylvania like this model is calling for I think this could be pretty exclusive there for some of the Adirondacks uh, maybe the Finger Lakes regions like this model is calling for here but definitely the Adirondacks has the highest chance to have those 10 inch plus amounts here on the snowfall 
Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a four out of six here. Uh, we're feeling pretty confident about some of the things we talked about here. Obviously, that snowstorm is going to be a little bit more of a longer range thing, so we're going to need to talk about that for the next couple of days and update you guys on that as more information comes out. But so far, these models have been very, very consistent with that snowfall, so we're feeling pretty good considering how far out that is. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how much do you think is the maximum snowfall we will see from that potentially major snowstorm that's going to be going on for the eastern United States? And Simon Page said, my realistic guess is 14 inches on a peak. And I definitely think that's a good number, somewhere there above 10 inches and somewhere probably closer to 15 inches as a maximum for this snowstorm, especially in the higher elevations. A good comment of the day there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Minhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Vallejo, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron and screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to absolutely destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below and also subscribe and hit that notification bell icon if you would like to get more videos from us. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. See you guys in the next video.